Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And today we're diving into a tool that's been hiding in plain sight on your Windows machine. One that could save you hours of frustration, protect your system from unwanted changes, and let you experiment without fear. It's called Windows Sandbox, and if you've ever hesitated to install a sketchy app or worried about cluttering your PC with trial software, then this episode is for you. We'll explore what it is, why it's a game changer for testing new applications, and how to set it up step by step. But here's the riddle that we'll unravel. What if you could run any program in a sealed off world, watch it play out, and then wipe it like it never happened? Stick around, because by the end you'll wonder how you ever lived without disposable windows. Imagine you've got a new piece of software. Maybe it's a free utility promising to speed up your PC or an open source tool from a developer that you've never really heard of. You're intrigued, but a nagging doubt creeps in. What if it's laced with malware? Or worse, what if it's just buggy and starts messing with your registry, scattering files around your hard disk, and conflicting with your existing setup in some way? In the old days, you might roll the dice, install it, and hope for the best, only to spend the next afternoon uninstalling remnants and scanning for viruses. But Windows Sandbox changes that equation entirely. It's a lightweight, disposable, virtual environment built right into Windows 10 and 11 Pro, Enterprise, and Education editions. Think of it as a temporary clone of your Windows installation, isolated from your real system, where you can run apps without any risk of permanent damage. At its core, Windows Sandbox leverages virtualization technology, similar to what powers Hyper-V to create a pristine, ephemeral instance of Windows. When you launch it, you get a fresh desktop, complete with a start menu, file explorer, and even internet access if you configure it that way. But here's the magic. Nothing you do inside the sandbox persists once you close it. The files you downloaded, gone. The apps you installed, vanished. Registry changes, erased. It's like a hotel room for your software. Check in, make a mess, and check out, and the maid service resets everything. Why focus on this as a disposable environment? Well, sure, it's fantastic for security, walling off potentially risky software so that malware can't escape and infect your host machine. But our main lens today is protection from the everyday annoyances. The malware that slips through, bugs that crash your workflow, and the system thrash that comes from an installing and uninstalling applications. Now, thrash in this context means the wear and tear on your OS. Fragmented drives, bloated registries, orphaned files that accumulates over time and slows things down. Sandboxing lets you avoid all of that, turning experimentation into a zero-consequence adventure. And as we peel back the layers, you'll see how this tool foreshadows a future where virtual isolation becomes the norm for safe computing. Before we get hands-on, let's ensure that you can actually use it. Windows Sandbox is not enabled by default, but setting it up is straightforward if your hardware supports it. First, check your Windows version. You need Windows 10, build 18.305 or later, or Windows 11. Head to Settings, Apps, Optional Features, and look for Windows Sandbox. If it's not there, you might need to enable virtualization in your system BIOS. Most modern CPUs from Intel or AMD support it, but it's often disabled by default. Restart your PC, go into the BIOS, you know, usually by pressing Delete or F2 during boot, whatever it is for your machine, and toggle the virtualization option on. Once that's done, back in Windows, go to the Control Panel, Programs and Features, and turn Windows features on or off. Scroll down and check the box for Windows Sandbox and hit OK. Windows will download and install the necessary components, which might take a few minutes and require a restart. Pro tip, if you're on a laptop, ensure you're plugged in as virtualization can be power hungry and Windows laptops actually work better when they're plugged in in general than when they're running strictly on battery. Now, why bother with these steps? Well, because once entered, Sandbox becomes your first line of defense against the unknown. It's not just for paranoia, it's just for anybody who's ever regretted clicking install on something that turned out to be more trouble than it's worth. And as we move forward, keep this in mind. The setup is a gateway to a world where you can test drive software without leaving tire marks on your main drive. With Sandbox enabled, firing it up is as simple as searching for Windows Sandbox in the start menu and clicking the app. A new window pops up and after a brief spin up, usually well within 30 seconds, especially the second and third time, you're greeted by a clean Windows desktop. It's essentially a minimized virtual machine running a lightweight version of your host OS. No blows from your installed apps, just the essentials. Notice the sandbox window behaves just like any other app. You can resize it, minimize it, or go full screen. Inside, you have access to the clipboard for copy pasting text between host and sandbox, but file sharing is limited by design. More on that later. The internet works right out of the box, routed through your host's connection so you can browse, download, and install things without issues. What if the app you want to test requires specific hardware, like a GPU? 
Well, Sandbox supports basic graphic acceleration, but for demanding tasks, it might fall short. That's a riddle we'll solve with configuration tweaks, ensuring that even graphics-intensive trials run smoothly. For now, let's focus on the basics and build from there. So let's get practical. Suppose you've downloaded an executable for a new photo editor from a site that seems legit, but it's not from a big name vendor. Instead of running it on your real host machine, drag the file into the Windows Sandbox. The app goes through setup, maybe it prompts for bin rights, which Sandbox grants within the isolated realm, and then you're off to the races. Test it thoroughly, edit photos, apply filters, save files inside the Sandbox. If it works, great, fantastic. You validated it without a bunch of risk. If it crashes, spews errors, or tries to install shady browser extensions, no harm done. Close the Sandbox window, confirm that you do want to discard the changes, and poof, it's all gone. Your host remains completely untouched. The disposable nature shines brightest with System Thrash. Traditional installs often litter your system with temp files, registry keys, and background services that linger sometimes post-uninstall. Over time, this builds up, leading to slower boots and quirky behaviors. Sandbox sidesteps that entirely. It's like running apps in a vacuum-sealed bag. And for bugs? Well, if the software you're trying out has a flaw that blue screens or loops infinitely, it only affects the sandbox. Your host keeps humming along. We'll cover that with mapped folders allowing safe data exchange without compromising your isolation. While our focus is disposability, we can't ignore the security perks. After all, they're intertwined. Sandbox runs with hardware-based isolation, meaning that even if malware infiltrates the sandbox, it can't access your host's files, its network shares, or its hardware. Under the covers, it's all built on the same tech as Windows Defender Application Guard, which enterprises use to sandbox the Edge browser for safe browsing. For risky software, say a crack tool from a torrent or an unsigned executable, Sandbox is ideal. Malware might try to encrypt files or phone home, but it's trapped. No ransomware spreading, no keyloggers stealing your credentials. But remember, if you copy infected files out, you could still transfer trouble. Always scan anything you drag out of there or copy out of there with an effective antivirus. And this ties us back to the protection from bugs and thrash. Because malware often masquerades as benign software, causing subtle system degradation. By containing it, you prevent that erosion, keeping your PC pristine and like new. To supercharge Sandbox, use configuration files. They're simple XML scripts that customize its behavior. Create a .wsb file with notepad like this. Then save it and double-click the .wsb file to launch a tailored Sandbox. This maps your host folder to the Sandbox, letting you access files bi-directionally. Perfect for testing apps on real data without full exposure. You can also enable disable networking, clipboarding, or even run commands on startup. This automation streamlines testing. Launch Sandbox and your app runs immediately. For thrash avoidance, it means no manual file shuffling. Test, tweak it, discard it. What about resource hogs? We'll tackle resource allocation next, ensuring that your Sandbox doesn't starve your host. Sandbox is pretty efficient, using about 100 megabytes of RAM at idle and minimal CPU. But for heavy apps, monitor it with my little friend Task Manager. Sandbox appears as Windows Sandbox.exe. If it spikes, close it and relaunch. No lingering processes. To limit resources, use Hyper-V Manager, which you can enable first via the Windows Features options, then create a VM for Sandbox with capped CPU and RAM, though this advanced setup suits power users best. This prevents bugs from thrashing your host. A looping app inside the Sandbox won't max out your actual cores indefinitely. And for malware, resource caps starve compute-intensive threats like miners. Let's level up. For developers, Sandbox is gold for testing your builds. Compile in your IDE, copy the XE in, and run it isolated. It catches environment-specific bugs without polluting your dev machine. Gamers, well, test your mods or launchers safely with no risk of corrupting your saves. You can also enable the virtual GPU in the configuration, and 3D apps will run a lot smoother, protected from driver crashes affecting the host. But no tool's perfect. Sandbox lacks printer and camera support, it can't join a domain, and it resets on close, there's no persistence. For long-term testing, you pretty much need a full VM. And if you've got a slow machine, the sandbox is a little slower yet. But these reinforce its disposable ethos. Use it for quick tests, not for production. If sandbox won't start, verify virtualization is enabled or check the event viewer for errors. If it crashes, just close it and the host is unaffected. For updates, Sandbox inherits most of the patches that are installed on the host, keeping you safe and secure in the Sandbox. So picture this. Let's say you're eyeing a new PDF editor. You download it, you run it in Sandbox. It works, but installs toolbars. Close, discard, your browser's clean. Or a system optimizer. Test the tweaks. If it breaks the Sandbox registry, no biggie. Each test is like a mini-adventure, resolved cleanly. As Windows evolves, Sandbox hints at deeper integration. 
perhaps AI-assisted isolation or cloud syncing. It democratizes safe computing, echoing Docker's portability but native to Windows. In a world of rising threats and software bloat, it's your shield against the chaos. And recently I hit a million subscribers and I never showed you the plaque, so there it is. And I'll put my big head in front of it again and you'll never see it. But if you found today's episode to be any combination of informative or entertaining, remember I mostly am in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. Please do check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, The Non-Visible Part of the Autism Spectrum. It's intended for folks that don't have an ASD diagnosis, but who suspect they might have a few characteristics that put them somewhere on the spectrum. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. Check it out at the link in the video description. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Lynn! Do it, do it! <laughs>